This is Twit. Apple Insider has uh, the article, Wesley Hilliard writing, on device Apple intelligence training. So Apple has a new plan. I'm, I'm guessing this is Mike Rockwell and Craig Federighi. They shared this yesterday. You'll, it is opt-in, but it's a new way to train. They're going to use differential privacy, which you may have heard this term. They, they started doing this in 2016. The idea is they collect data about you, but then they introduce noise so that data collectors can't figure out where the data came from. It's basically a way of anonymizing it. There is some skepticism over differential privacy among privacy experts. Uh, so what Apple is planning to do, and this actually comes from uh, Mark Gurman, is to take synthetic user data anonymized user data from a lot of different customers, including you and me, anonymize it, then look at your, this is very complicated, then look at your data and see if your data coincides with any part of that data set, the synthetic data set, and if it does, then it takes a synthetic data <laughs> and uses that for your AI. Yeah, the, the, the Apple uh, machine learning group published actually a, a white a paper about this to the to the blog basically explaining that the, the overall thing is that previously because the dogma inside apple is that look user privacy privacy is privacy, privacy absolutely paramount yeah. we can't train on user data what they've been doing instead is training on synthetic data which is you know it's it's like cheese spelled with a, or actually like these chips ahoy with whatever <laughs> they, they can't call it chocolate so they say c h o k l i t oh uh, lord so 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 <laughs> so i mean that's and that's one of the reasons because it's it's not real data only looks like data. That means that in terms of trying to figure out which email <laughs> is actually important and which email is actually spam that's trying to look important, very, very difficult. So they're changing and saying that, okay, we're going to have to start looking at actual user data in order to train our AI models. So uh, as part of it, they're saying that they've, they're saying that they're switching to this thing, but don't worry with, they will be, the AI will be able to actually look at your email and train the, their AI models on it. They are reassuring people and saying that, we are not going to necessarily just throw your text, your private emails into a hopper. What we're going to do it is we're going, we're using differential privacy, not dissimilar from what they promised to be using when they had their on device CSAM scanning. scanning. Yeah, uh, and also they say that it's going to be opt in. I don't know, but it's a little bit vague as to whether this means that they will ask you after a system, after a system update to eighteen point five if it's okay to turn that on or if as they did with some advertising in the Apple Store app, they'll automatically turn it on. And if you're annoyed by it, hope that you will, won't like actually go into settings and turn it off. But it does show you how much they how much they feel as though they booted uh, their initial development of AI. That they said, okay, we thought this, that we did this for the, for the right reasons, but it's not working. And now we are willing to compromise a little bit. And they're doing the technical stuff to, to protect people's privacy. But even if that actually works, there's still the uncomfortable notion of, wow, you're, we're helping you, I'm helping you to build this incredibly valuable corporate asset and you'll be giving me how many dollars in store credits per month for letting, no, nothing, not even like 50 cents, not even like one free item. Okay, that sounds totally fair. Uh, it's a little concerning that the very first example they show uh, in their white paper, Understanding Aggregate Trends for Apple Intelligence Using Differential Privacy, is Genmoji. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe it's best to start with something um, not harmful. Um, for example, understanding how our models perform when a user requests Genmoji that contain multiple entities like dinosaur and a cowboy hat. Helps us improve the responses to those kinds of requests. It's a... Uh, okay, then they talk about improving text generation with synthetic data. Synthetic data are created to mimic the format and important properties of user data, but do not contain any actual user-generated content. They want to produce synthetic sentences or emails that are similar enough in topic or style to the real thing to help improve our models for summarization. Does this sound like they're really, uh, this sounds like a moonshot a little bit, like they're really, they're almost desperate at this point. I would call it desperate, more like changing their game plans. Uh, again, it's- I it's feel so like they, they've they've realized that- I, 
they had, and this we've talked about this all along, that they have a problem, which is privacy and AI seem to be incompatible, at least effective it, AI. Yeah, I think that this actually is more part of the original plan or what they needed to do long term, which is they got to find ways to take advantage of the fact that privacy is hard and that they have it, you know, like they have it in a way that the other organizations don't. So I think while there's obviously a lot of chaos that they have related to that, a lot of it was just saying too much too quickly in the sense that Apple can start to look at data carefully. And if they unwind this carefully and they maintain privacy and they do all the things that they're working on doing here, they have a massive advantage over everybody else. You know, like, you know, uh, there's a lot of things that, that they can see uh, about you in your phone that you're not going to share with Google or other, most many people won't want to share with Google or other others. Um, so that they, they can, people will, you know, there's lots of things around our, all these devices that we have attached to us that we're carrying around that we're putting information into that, you know, I'm not going to willingly give it to pretty much anybody outside of my phone and, and, and Apple, if they figure out a way to, to do this in a way that, and most of us are going to lean more towards trusting Apple for privacy than, the other organizations touching our data uh, for better or for worse. And so Apple has this huge advantage of that. And right now they're behind on the overall calculation of or overall solutions for LLM. But if they take it, if they slowly grow into that, while they t take advantage of that privacy uh, first model, um, they'll have a, a level, they, they have the potential of a level of interaction with our data that um, isn't going to be common for other uh, services. And so I think that that it does it. This is less, this feels less desperate. A lot of the other stuff they were doing feels pretty desperate. <laughs> and again, it was mostly people starting to say stuff that wasn't done when no one was going anywhere. Like the use, the users are not leaving tomorrow because yeah. they didn't have a on their phone. I mean, I'm using chat like someone, I can't, I apologize for, for getting the person's name. Someone listened to the show and I was complaining about the fact that, Oh, I just want to hit the thing. And they, they sent me a, uh, um, uh, a, a shortcut on my phone. So now I just say something, I say a Siri shortcut and what I, what, what do I get? Chat GPT set up for <laughs> chat. So now I'm, you know, so I, uh, so now I just say start chat all the time and, um, and it's, uh, it works great. So, so and, and I, and to, to, um, Alex's point, I think this is very important. And from a user perspective, never mind the noise of the media and the pundits and everybody, all the naysayers, I would rather Apple take two more years, like give me 2027 20, April to right. nail this correctly than to be forced into doing something because everybody keeps yapping about something that the majority of us don't care about. I don't care that Siri is broken right now if I know that in two years I can get sorry get a situation where i do ask a question like would you like to play tennis tomorrow at 11 and it automatically knows that of the three of you the only one that plays tennis is alex so it's going to send a message to alex i don't even have to say that part because it knows i've already we played tennis on tuesday like six weeks in a row like those are the kind of stuff where it's going to come in really handy and I'd rather, i don't I think it knows that i think that's right. the whole point though is it does not look at your it, data it it but it will, if you could do it in the enclave of your phone and it can right. figure out your context based on your phone, it doesn't have to go to anybody's servers and it realizes what you do and you could develop an intelligent assistant that doesn't require you sharing this private information with anybody else. This is where they're going to win. And I'd rather them just take their time and do it correct. Because yeah. a lot of people yeah. are just making noise and like, oh, let me make all these cool Studio Ghibli stuffs as a huge fan and as as a person who loves the idea of Mr. Miyazaki, because I watched all the documentaries, watched all of the film, been to the hometown, the whole nine yards, I was kind of irritated watching everybody else steal his style and make those things. I did one, and then I'm like, yeah, okay, I got to stop, because this isn't, this isn't so in the, the scope of what he does. You know what I mean? Apple introduced the idea of deferential privacy in 2016. I mean, and they've been working on this for some time. At that time, experts uh, said, the EFF said, yeah, in principle, this is a good idea we'd like to know more about apple how apple does it and it it's it is it's one of those situations where there's a slider between you know complete privacy and no privacy and effectiveness and ineffectiveness and it's a really all about <laughs> there's a there's a picture of the slider i don't know that's a <laughs> that's a mathematic this is from wikipedia the problem is it isn't it's it's not perfect 
and how it's implemented is it really is the devil's in the details and uh, apple is not completely forthcoming about how they implement it now i'm encouraged by the fact that they have been doing this since 2016 that's a good sign they were one of the first to offer differential yeah. privacy and, and, and that it's opt, opt in i think as you point out andy is a very good sign yeah and also as alex said if there's anybody that we're going to be trusting open with more access to our personal data it's definitely apple and that's they've earned that kind of trust and that's great um i'm not sure if it's uh i think it will allow them to catch up and get where they need to go i'm not sure if it's an advantage so to speak because uh google's user user base is just so much bigger than apple's the number of people who opt in or fail to opt out it more which is more google style is so great that those people are going to be training and improving the models for the people who are concerned about their privacy on google and have clicked the button and say no you can't use any of my you can't see any of my data for this you can't see any of my data for that they will still have have the benefits of gemini two point whatever, looking at your Gmail inbox and being able to surface, no, these are absolutely the most important emails in this inbox. Or when I tell you, when I ask my calendar, where was that place I went to with that person that time to parse that, or, oh, uh, you met your Aunt Gladys at this restaurant in New Orleans on this date. That's the sort of stuff that is going to benefit everybody, if, uh, if, thanks to the, the, the people who actually we're okay with giving more data. We talk, we talk about sliders. Apple is always, this has always been something that Apple has had to confront where their institutional culture of privacy being sacrosanct, being part of every decision at the very, very beginning is a very, very important part of what they do and why it's great. However, that doesn't come at no cost to how well their products work. And so I think eternally, and certainly for the foreseeable future, there's going to always be that question of, if we compromise privacy a little bit, and so not so, and not so much that there is anything we can point to that's tangible that people are losing uh, by giving up this much privacy, and in and give the users a disproportionately high benefit compared to what we compromised in their privacy by getting that data, that's something we should be going for. And that's something that they have to figure out where that slider needs to be. Because the times, because again, I'm, I'm a, uh, I've, I've decided that the deal with the devil is perfectly fine by me. Uh, I'm getting as much or more than I feel as so I'm giving up. And I trust Google to keep my, only be the only person that exploits this data as opposed to selling it off to other people. Uh, and as a result, boy, their AI products, they're not just, they aren't like the, the silly stuff like, oh, Studio Ghibli version of, uh, of, of, of whatever. It really is, again, give me, I need, I'm looking for the photo of the place where I went that time and it actually coming through. Uh, and the ability to simply say that here is, here is like 2,000 pages worth of documents on this subject. I need you to tell me what in these documents refers to how tariffs are going to help medical technology or hurt medical technology and boom within like 20 seconds giving me not 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 hallucinations but a summary quotations links to exactly where you can i can go to find these things that's the stuff that makes me glad that google is exploiting people <laughs> and that's the <laughs> yes. stuff and, and apple needs to get some of that magic going for its products too